I was planning to take a long break after the ridiculous amount of work I put into my last video, but it turns out I've got just a little bit more to say regarding Kingdom Hearts. Plus, I kind of wanted to challenge myself and see if I could put out a smaller video within a day's time, so apologies if this latest vid is a downgrade quality, but I'm going to have to cut some corners if I want this video out before Kingdom Hearts 3. Recently, I've been seeing more and more story recap videos popping up, which is hardly a surprise, but I've also been seeing an equal amount of comments writing the whole thing off as impossible to figure out even with recap videos. Again, that's not a surprise either, but it's also what I wanted to talk about today. This isn't a rebuttal about the quality of the story itself, but rather the excuses people tend to come up with on why it's unapproachable for newcomers. My first point is about the stressing out over memorizing every single story detail from every single piece of Kingdom Hearts media, over the assumption that every tiny piece is necessary to putting together the puzzling narrative. While this is entirely speculation on my part, having not played Kingdom Hearts 3 yet, and dodging spoiler videos with the same urgency as the zombies in Resident Evil 2 Remake, I'm going to assume that much of it isn't going to matter in the long run. While I'm sure there's going to be lots of nods and callbacks to previous games, that's all they're likely going to be. As an example, take a look at the secret boss fight against Xemnas in the Final Mix version of the first Kingdom Hearts. Western fans didn't get to play Final Mix until the HD collection on PS3 years later, so we ended up missing that link between the original Kingdom Hearts Final Mix and Kingdom Hearts 2. But it also turned out not to be that big a deal, since Kingdom Hearts 2 was where we were formally introduced to Xemnas and his goals. His boss fight in KH2 intentionally referenced his Final Mix encounter as a sort of of, oh hey, so that's who that guy was moment. But in the end, it was nothing more than a neat but also inconsequential callback, and for a good chunk of the Kingdom Hearts story, that's all it really is. Lots of people have mocked and criticized the series for having a narrative so bloated it's borderline incomprehensible, but honestly, Kingdom Hearts is just doing the same thing that most other franchise games are doing expanding the lore. If the Souls games have a fanbase that's dedicated to piecing together item descriptions and vague NPC dialogues to form a cohesive narrative that ultimately has no bearing on the games themselves, why should Kingdom Hearts fans be mocked for essentially doing the same thing? Now, that being said, Square could have done a much better job at emphasizing over which games were crucial to the overarching narrative of Kingdom Hearts and which ones were just one-off, not very important, tiny little Easter egg entries. I attribute much of the blame to the admittedly ridiculous naming conventions for each title, as well as spreading them out across multiple platforms. Case in point, Chain of Memories, originally exclusive to the Game Boy Advance, remains the biggest offender in my opinion, because it not only bridged the gap between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, it also included a story that was absolutely essential to understanding the more crucial story bits of the latter. I'm pretty sure Square quickly became aware of this too, which is why it was quickly ported to the PS2 and was even included as a pack-in title with the Japanese final mix of Kingdom Hearts 2. This is why, if I had the chance to adjust things, I would have originally released Chain of memories on both GBA and PS2 from the start. Likewise, I would have also put Birth by Sleep on the PS2, because even back then I had remarked over how technically impressive the PSP original was, and how it could have easily released as a proper sequel to Kingdom Hearts 2. That's right, I would have called Birth by Sleep Kingdom Hearts 3, in order to further emphasize its massive importance to the overall story. As for the less consequential games, again, they should have stuck with simpler subtitles, like calling 358 Days Over 2, I actually had to look up how to say that properly, to something like like Roxas story, but a lot of that is just hindsight, because the good news is that you can now experience the entire story under one console. That's a privilege few other video game franchises have. Which leads me to my next point. If you're a newcomer who is trying to find the most comprehensive, easiest to understand video or spreadsheet to bring you up to speed on the Kingdom Hearts story, I have the ultimate, most certified answer for you. Play. The. Games. Seriously. It may be the longer solution, but you'll honestly have an easier time grasping, and possibly appreciating, the story beats if you experience them as intended. I feel like the reason so many people are struggling to understand things even with video summaries is because they're trying to condense over a dozen games into one 30-minute video. You ever have that situation in high school where you're like, I don't need to read the whole book, I'll just buy the cliff notes, only to end up with a lower grade because you missed out on the finer details? It's the same idea here. Not every story can be neatly compressed into a short summary, and this doesn't just apply to Kingdom hearts. Let's say you wanted to check out Avengers Infinity War and you asked your friend to summarize the last 10 years of Marvel movies. Or you wanted to check out the newest Dragon Ball movie and thought you could get by a quick summary of a franchise that's been going on for almost 30 years and with over 500 episodes. You might get the overall gist of things, but these works were clearly not intended for you to binge in an afternoon. And if you're next going to say, but I don't have time to play all those games, the sequel is right around the corner. Well, you don't have to play Kingdom Hearts 3 on launch day, you know. I'm actually following someone right now on Twitter who decided to start 
start the series for the first time, playing through each game in order with the intention of getting to the third game later down the line. Alternatively, you can just choose to go into the third game and not care about understanding all the story bits. I did this recently with Yakuza 6, having only played Zero and the first game, as well as Kiwami, which is a remake of the first game. Either way, Kingdom Hearts 3 isn't going anywhere, and that's all I really wanted to say. Once again, I'm not trying to convince you that Kingdom Hearts' story is easy to follow, I'm just offering the best way to approach it. Play the collection of games on PS4, or at least watch a cutscene compilation. Otherwise, if you're one of those people who would rather just sit back to point and laugh at everyone who is legitimately excited for the new game, well, you're worse than Xehanort. And possibly Hitler. Green.